Hello and welcome to another Let's Play by the Starman Project. I'm Devin. And I'm Curtis. And Curtis, what is this we're playing? It's Castlevania 4, but... It is. Um, it's a little bit different than what you might be used to. This is a, uh, an uncensoring patch that we've applied, and we can drop the, the link to this hack in the, the video description. But what it does is it basically restores a lot of the stuff that was censored in the American release. Um, a lot of the religious iconography, <laughs> see that tombstone right there with the cross on top? That was not there originally in the, uh, the American release. Yep. So there's some religious iconography and uh, some statues were uncentered a little bit. And then probably the mo most noticeable change that you'll see is uh, stage 8, the dungeon. Instead of having a bunch of green slime everywhere, it's actual you know blood like it's supposed to be. So yep. yeah, just a few little things like that. Thought it might be fun to show off. Really, I just wanted an excuse to play through this game. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a good excuse as well to do so. This game is awesome. Um, it's and just... of the Castlevanias that aren't the Castlevanioids, yep. uh, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, it, I'd say probably between this and Rondo of Blood for me, um, both are hella good games. This one is just... Uh, it was one of the first Super Nintendo games that came out, and it's just got some amazing level design and atmosphere. The music is stellar, absolutely stellar. I do recommend, like, we're going to be blabbering over the music, but yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I, I would recommend the soundtrack to anybody. If you want to just fire it up, um, it's very different from your usual Castlevania soundtrack, which is, tends to be more rock and roll, uh, hard riff heavy. This one is very much atmospheric and laid back sort of music. Yeah. It's, it's a very different uh, Castlevania soundtrack approach, but a very welcome one. Um, I don't think every game in the series would benefit from it, but it really works with this game's atmosphere and tone and feel. Um, something you, I don't know, may or may not know about this game is that really it's actually a, it's not a sequel, it's actually a reimagining or re-release of sorts of the original Castlevania. So you are Simon in this game. Going in on your original quest to destroy Dracula, I guess ostensibly Simon's quest hasn't even happened yet. So you're just kind of doing the, the main thing and killing the Count. This isn't, this isn't a post-Simon's quest to uh, kill Dracula yet again, because it's been 100 years since he last arose, so yeah. we're guessing Simon's not 120 plus in this game. <laughs> Might be a little bit too creaky for his uh, vampire killer dudes if that were the case. Oh, he watched like he's 120s on me. Yeah, well, it, the, the good news for those who have played uh, the NES games um, is that you're a bit more, well, a lot more, I should say, mobile in this game. You can actually kind of control your your mid-air uh, jumps in this game, and you're not committed to it once you start jumping, which is a nice little thing. Um, and your whip can, yeah, go in eight directions this time around, which is pretty cool. cool. So let's get it underway, shall we? We shall. Alright. I'm guessing the controls are mapped to what I want them to be, so let's just go for it. The reason they want you to enter your name is that if you end up uh, using a password in this game, not only do you have to map a bunch of symbols onto a grid, you also have to enter the name that you use for your save file. So that's why they want you to do this here. Ah, uh, okay. Not really used elsewhere in the game. The game doesn't even have like actual save files, so like if this game isn't saved within the game's memory or anything like that. So. All right, we ready to whip some fools? We are ready to whip some fools. Yeah. The nice thing with this game is that the difficulty curve is pretty well paced as well. Like the yeah. first few levels are pretty fair, and then slowly as the game goes on, get more devious. Last few levels, it can be a real pain. Most of, mostly in a good way, but <laughs> the yeah. last one's a bit of a jerk on their own. Oh yeah, so can that sign in Steam. <laughs> so yeah, you can move your whip like a maniac here, flail it around like a wild man. Okay. Um, 
One neat little thing about the gate, too, that isn't really clear is that you can just dangle the whip in front of you, and anything that touches your arm hitbox will also get damaged. Yeah. So you don't have to flail necessarily. If you just keep your whip, whip hold L it like that, you can sometimes block the jack too. Um, yeah, the whip is your best friend. This game has sub weapons like the other Castlevania games as well. Uh, it's got the dagger, it's got the stopwatch, it's got the axe, and the holy water, and the boomerang. Did I mention boomerang? Uh, uh, cross is usually yeah, what cross people call it. Boomerang. Yep. <laughs> they call it the boomerang in the uh, American releases because, you know, religious stuff is yeah. too scary for anybody. Um, but uh, yeah, the sub weapons, they can be useful at times, but really the star of this game is your weapon. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember there being like a boss that's like, wow, I really wish I hit that sub weapon that yeah, you couldn't uh, like, stop with the whip. There's not many. Um, there's a couple more that are helpful, but. You can get by with it usually. And they give you a hell of a lot of hearts in this game as well. I find by the end of most levels I've got more hearts than I know what to do with, and those are just totaled with your score at the end of each level. So, still, might as well grab them while you've got them just, uh, just yeah. in case you need a throw. Just, just in case. <laughs> and score is useful because I think it's. Determines your life, doesn't it? Yeah, so 20,000 points will get you an extra life, and then every 50,000 after that, I think, is how it works. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Worth trying to keep your score going if you can. This game does have unlimited continues, which is great, but um, if you if you have a game over, you'll basically go all the way back to the start of the stage that you're currently in. Yeah. Some of these stages can go on for a while, so that can be a bit of a hassle. <laughs> so, generally, uh, yeah. Yeah. Death is punishable, but not. It's not. It's not crippling. Game. Yeah, this isn't a game where you have to get through it all in a couple continues or whatever, which is a good thing because it's kind of a bigger game for what it is. It's like a couple hours long ish. If, if things go well, if things don't go well and you die a lot, then well, you can drag on as long as it needs to, I guess. But yeah. So. Seems to say you're a fan of this series, because uh, you just went on for, yeah. like, ten minutes. We're babbling about crap. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, this was the game I wanted to put on the channel after my Mega Man X playthrough. Uh, I would say that my favorite series, retro series, would be the Mega Man Castlevania. So I figured that those would be a nice uh, couple of LPs to start with for my input on this channel. So, Castlevania, I love the aesthetic of Castlevania. I suck at <laughs> these. I will play any of the Metroidvanias, and I will play them to 100% completion. Yeah. But. Not so much with the old ones? Yeah. Not so much with the old ones. You put me in front of this, I'm going to struggle. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, it's a very different, yeah, it's a very different uh, set of. You know, I think this one was one of my favorites because of the continue system. Yeah. And actually, like, most of them are, I will say that most of the early games, as punishing as they can be, do have a unlimited continue system. It's just that some of them are just brutally difficult even with that. Yeah. Um, or have or have parts that are brutally difficult. Um, Castlevania 1, like, that death level everyone loves. Yeah. The, the fifth level of the game is the Grim Reaper fight, and nobody uh, gets through that one unscathed, uh, unless they spam holy water. Yeah. So, yeah, it, the, the, the games are filled with stumbling blocks of varying kinds. Um, uh, Castlevania Bloodlines for the Genesis is one of the few that has limited continues, uh, which is a game, yeah, I, I like it, but I don't know. I feel like limited continues are a thing I don't really need. No. I always prefer the, you know, keep trying until you get it sort of yeah. approach to games. I always felt it was just a kind of a cheap way to pad every game's length. It's just also so demoralizing. Like, yeah. You get so far and then it's like, oh, yeah. now I'm back to stare. Yeah, there's something to be said for, like, games I'll where put you, this uh, back on the shelf until I enjoy <laughs> yeah. torturing myself again. Yeah. Oh, and crosses in the background with those horses. Those weren't there before, by the way. Yeah. Only in the uncensored version of the Japanese version. Ah, good old candle meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, the running gag on this one is that Dracula's probably gone senile. Yeah... Well, you know, when you're hiding your meat in your wall, it's... it's... Oh, there's some design choices later on that we'll get into. <laughs> yep. I should get you while you're... I'm going to drop on my head while I pass under you, speaking of the W. And 
Classic Belmont curse of stairs are your worst enemy. Yeah, Belmonts and stairs are not a good mix. They uh, they kind of suck at, at stair climbing. There's not much they can do to defend themselves when they're flying. Walk in there. In boss. And this, this is the first boss. His name is Rowdy, I believe. He's a skeleton riding horse. Nothing too threatening with this fella. So uh, the uh, dagger's nice just to peg him from a distance while he's spitting fireballs at you. But yeah, it's not too bad. The horse collapses and then he just kind of ambles at you. He does these hilariously high jumps that are guaranteed to pretty much miss you every time, so yeah. I become a regular enemy later in other games. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Revan. He tried. Probably tried. Probably tried. So, favorite Belmont then? Favorite Belmont. Um. Huh. I kind of like Leon, I guess. Just because he has like a character arc and whatnot that's kind of fun. He was, he's in uh, Lament of Innocence for the PS2. Yeah. And he also has one of the greatest lines ever, which is, I'll kill you and the knight. <laughs> which is a great line. You can't go wrong with that line. No, you really can't. Julius Belmont is also awesome. Julius is one of my favorites. Yes. I, I want a game with... Or I, no, I'm thinking... Uh, Julius is the one from Araya and Dawn. Yeah. Um, yeah, he doesn't have his own game He yet. does not. Yeah. What really needs to happen is because he was the one to ultimately destroy Dracula yeah. in 1999. So fans have been clamoring for, you know, the 1999 game. Yeah. And I still want that, even though Konami probably can't make a game like that anymore and has to good. Yeah. But, well, you know, <laughs> we'd like to think they could try, but, man, yeah. It's one of those games that well, is probably doomed to eventually, maybe some days, uh, being made into a fan game. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I would definitely take more Julius in my life. Second stage, uh, just a, for a forest um, and some rivers, basically. The, uh, the interesting thing about this stage is that the boss is actually kind of fought halfway through the stage, um, <laughs> which is a bit of a departure from the norm. That's the other thing I like is that we're not actually in the castle right now. Yeah, so this game uh, is pretty cool. Castlevania 3 did it as well, but I really like how uh, some of these, some of the Castlevania games have you roaming through the Transylvanian countryside before you get to, you know, the, the castle itself, which is great. Kind of see some of the sights and scenes around. Yeah. Quite some stupid hedgehogs and some leaf monsters and some zombies in the Transylvanian countryside. That water down there is not instantly fatal, but you'll sink pretty fast in it, and if you sink far enough, you'll just die. And birds always suck, as, as we know. Any time there's a bird enemy in a Castlevania game anymore, a lot of old games in general, they usually yeah. suck. <laughs> birds in early uh, Nintendo eras always, always suck. They're not great. The tiny animal enemies really pack a punch for what they are in these old games. Oh yeah, at least. <laughs> More than they should, that's for sure. See those bats which can tank a, one of the whip flailing attacks before they go down. Which is, you know, you'd think they'd be the most frail little things ever, but, you know, they can take a, a little hit there, I guess. Again, good old wall. Yeah, we love it. What's the fan term for that? Me for something? So, it, it's I don't think it's widely used, but there's an LP here I, I really enjoy. Uh, Shout out to uh, Brick Road, who uh, came up with the term, I think he came up with the term, uh, which is meat. M-E-E-F. Because something about that word just suits uh, this wall meat very well. So yeah. I like to use it too. <laughs> it's very evocative somehow. <laughs> Yep. She's pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, especially if you've got a boomerang, just kind of stay back. Those beans can paralyze you, but it's not really a big deal if you're far back from her. Yeah. So just let the boomerangs clobber her ass while they whip the snakes. And you pretty much got it. Like that. And second half of the level takes you through this river here, which uh, is enchanted water, I guess. It just kind of randomly changes directions. Um, actually, I don't want that. So, one thing I picked up earlier, do you see that icon with the Roman, Roman numeral 2 in the upper right? Yep. Um, what that is, it's, it's called a double, and it lets you have two of a projectile on the screen at once. Um, the one, one of the things I don't like for this game is that if you accidentally pick up another sub-weapon, it you'll lose your fact. double or triple. Yeah, there's yep. a triple as well. And it's really stupid that you would have to lose your uh, your double or triple just because you picked up a different weapon. Yeah. Another reason why sub weapons in this game are kind of feel like they're half baked in a lot of ways. Yeah. And down here is a I feel like a somewhat little known secret, but one of these arches. I think it's the second one. Let's see. If you whip upwards into it, you probably heard that chime. That was yep. a one up. <laughs> so, a random one up, one of two one ups in the game that are just lying around, is hidden in that archway there. Something you might not know about. Weird. You know, there's one more one up in the game, and it's right in level six. And those are the only two. The rest of the one ups you have to get through your score. That's it for level two. There's not even a chaos orb. Nope. <laughs> I never really even picked up on that until you just mentioned it. But yeah, Medusa doesn't even drop one. Now this level is probably host to my, uh, maybe my favorite music in the game. This one in the next uh, sub levels track as well. Just, I feel like they're the perfect representation of this game's soundtrack. Mellow, atmospheric. Creepy. Good. Just a good old Castlevania cave. That bat wants on me. Things also start to get a little bit more actually dangerous later on in this level. And by, by that I mean I might actually die here, so we'll see. So far so good, but yeah. Um, levels definitely start to get harder from here on out. Yeah. As they should. As they should. Like I said, the difficulty curve in this game is generally quite uh, That's okay, I'm actually going to get... I'll probably just get a little here anyways. But yeah, I, I, I really don't like that system very much. And considering you just got it back. Yeah. I mean, I don't have my double anymore, but... No, but you got... <laughs> but yeah, there's holy water down below, and I'm going to use that to wreck some of these mud monsters anyway, so no big deal. <laughs> whip, whip, ah! Yeah, just, eh, why not? <laughs> well, I didn't fail that too early. Ah, shoot, let's go. Oh, well. This means I'll have to kill these mud monsters a bit slower, I guess. Alright, should still do alright though. <laughs> Holy water is too pretty quick. Yeah. As you would expect, they're mud monsters. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, right? Well, there, I've got my double boomerang back again. <laughs> Nothing of value was lost. Yeah, totally. Some stalactites for you. Right, now here's the real good music. Yeah, this track. I know this track. Yeah. This reminds me a lot of uh, lower um, Brinstar and Super Metroid. Yeah. It's got a similar feel to it. Just kind of a grassy feel. Like, I know that sounds weird to say, but... like I get you. No 
better team for climbing a waterfall, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if I really explained, but those uh, those hook things are a new mechanic to this game because of its flexible whip. They decided to put in those little things that let you swing to other platforms. It's kind of a cool thing. Sometimes it, some of the traps they make, make, make for them are kind of a pain, but I still like it overall, I think. It can be a little bit weird to get used to the physics of it, but I like it. You can kind of extend your whip upwards and downwards while you're swinging on them, so you can kind of aim your trajectory a little bit. Yeah. The unfortunate thing is that the floor doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> another downside to this game, is uh, the moment the floor is out of sight, it, it's out of existence. <laughs> so you can fall down, if I were to fall down right there, I might die. Yeah, um, you would die there. So, yeah. Simon can't touch floors that he can't see anymore, I guess. I don't know. His spatial awareness <laughs> is... <laughs> it's a little bit uh, supernaturally bad, I guess, or something. Yeah. That's the true monster of Castlevania, is this floors that don't exist anymore. I'm trying to think what's in there. Is that stopwatch? Yep. Actually, if you want a stopwatch, I think, for this section. I don't know if I accidentally pick up some other sub weapon while I'm at it. There's this one part kind of later on in this part where it's helpful. Whip, whip. Whip, 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 whip. Yeah, so here's where platforming starts to get a bit nicer. And those things try to snipe you with their water jets. So from here on out, things will get a bit trickier. It's so weird seeing these enemies. <laughs> because you know them from other games too. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Like, the old white dragons are a bane of everyone's existence, especially in the old games. Tanky and annoying. So I might just be uh, so hanging yourself a bit over there. I don't know, a lot of hearts to burn through. What do I care? You got like 80 hearts, I mean. Yeah, it's. Max is 99, by the way, after that. I don't think it counts anymore. Yeah. So here's a part where it's nice to have a uh, stop match. Right here, these things will start to come up and try to snipe you. <clears throat> and knock you off. So I like to just skip on through. <laughs> yeah, that was a good plan. Yeah. Ah, uh, bollocks. I guess I touched him. Yeah. <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, we're not going for a no damage run, so. <laughs> no, we're really not. Yeah. yeah. I totally forgot to just run into those guys. Well, there goes my stopwatch, but so it is. Hurts. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering what those uh, weird thingies I'm picking up, like just now, um, they're the best upgrade. Yeah, so another weird quirk about these old games is that uh, when you die, you start with this crappy leather whip, and only after you pick up a couple of the whip upgrades do you get back to your nice long chain whip, which is kind of weird. It, usually uh, the candles prioritize including those uh, pretty quickly, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Oh, should have whipped him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, here, but now you can see what I, I mean. So that was a leather whip. This is still a shorter chain whip. There's like four upgrades to this one, isn't there? So there's two total. Um, there is a uh, the one the, the leather whip. You pick up one and then you have the short chain whip yeah. that I have now, and once I pick up one more, it'll be a max. So yeah. Okay, so not that bad. It's, to it's not the end of the world. It's not not really fun to fight stuff with this crappy whip, but yeah, it's not too bad. There we go. Back up the hole. Dead. Alright. So 
We don't get murdered in this part again. <clears throat> Go oh, away. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> there we go. Off to a rollicking good start. Off to start. a rollicking good start. Yep. Sorry. Whip. Jump. Hopefully I don't get shanked by a... There we go. <laughs> Safe. Doesn't make the jump. <laughs> that, would, that would be sad. <laughs> that would be real sad. Oh, there we go. I just picked up a rosary. You didn't see it, but it's a little cross-shaped pendant, and it's just a screen clear. Yeah. They're few and far in between in this one, I think. Yeah, they definitely are. They'll pop up every now and then, but not super frequently. Also, probably the only cross in the game that for whatever reason wasn't censored, so go figure that one. I think it's because the graphics on it, you can't really tell it's a cross unless you get a good look at it. Yeah, I guess they were banking on that, or they just didn't even notice somehow. They noticed the crosses in the background where the skeleton horses are, but not that one or something. Yeah. Who knows? Crows. Damn, buzzard, I ain't dead yet. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. Try to stick you with their swords, but you can duck them. <laughs> Here's the boss, the Orchid Vipers. The danger here is getting knocked into the water, really. Um, yeah. They're not too bad. Uh, one head will, will shoot a spread shot of three fireballs, and the other head will just shoot a pretty easy to dodge streak of fire. Um, I think you can just block the fireballs, so I'm gonna. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I love how you put confidence into that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a bit of a test of faith right there, but you did it. Nailed it. Head it down. I'm not sure which one it was. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Excuse me. You just chopped its head off of an axe. That was pretty good, right? Yeah. yeah. But with that, sir, we'll have to call this episode. Indeed, yeah. Three levels is pretty good for uh, this game. They're long. I love this map, by the way. I do. It's very aesthetically ple pleasing to look at. It is. Yeah. Cool thing. So we'll just get to this area here and pause. There we go. And until next time, I'm Devin. I'm Curtis. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>